and we're live. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Downship of Derry Board of Supervisors meeting scheduled for Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. Uh, this is our regularly scheduled meeting. It is now 7, 12 p.m. We'll begin our meeting. I'd like to apologize at this outset for some tef technical dif difficulties we've had this evening, just uh, accessing the Zoom program. But I think we're all ready to go. And so uh, before we call the meeting to order, I would just indicate that this board met in executive session at 6.30 p.m. this evening to discuss personnel issues. Uh, that meeting concluded at approximately 6.45 p.m. All right, so at this point, since we have called the meeting to order, uh, Mr. Blehush, if you would put a image of the flag on the screen, we will begin our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Blayosh. Mr. Chrisman, would you please conduct the roll call? Absolutely. Supervisor Zamuda? Here. Supervisor Court? Here. Supervisor Nutt? Here. Supervisor Wyckoff? Here. And Supervisor Abruzzo? Here. Five present, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Chrisman. The next item on our agenda is visitor public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to place comments into the public record. As such, uh, we ask that all members of the public wishing to make a statement introduce themselves by first name and last name and address. This is, so, this is for the purpose of keeping and recording accurate minutes. It's very important that we do so. Uh, Mr. Blayhush, uh, knows that our protocol is that if a speaker uh, gets the mic, so to speak, and doesn't properly identify him or herself and their address, uh, they will be uh, put on mute and they will be put back at the end of the queue. We will give them a second opportunity at the end of the queue. And if they have the same they fail to introduce themselves properly and, and don't provide their address, uh, we will not have a third opportunity, we'll just move on. Um, we also ask that all speakers try to keep their public comment to three minutes or less. Um, again, this is not a question and answer session, this is public comment, so try to be to the point, be concise. Um, I will interrupt if I have to towards the end of three minutes to kind of nudge any speaker along so that they wrap up in an appropriate period of time. Other than that, the floor will be uh, given to the speaker. Uh, with that, Mr. Blayhush, I would ask that you usher in the first speaker and we will go from there. First tonight we have Colette Pemajor. Hello, thank you. Um, I didn't realize I would be up that quickly, but I'm ready and I will keep my comments pretty short. Um, and I'm gonna play something for you. Ignore the dog, sorry. Colette, may we please have your address for the record, please? I'm sorry, yes. I'll pause this. I live at 1565 Brookline Drive in Hummelstown. Hold on, I'm going to shut my door for a second. So the noise that, uh, that you are hearing here um, is filmed from my back deck. Um, and this is noise that I now hear all weekend long for six or eight hours a day. This is noise that my um, children hear when they're trying to do their schoolwork. <clears throat> so this is, uh, as you probably know, I live near the uh, Hummelstown, I think it's the Field and Stream or something organization. 
that serves as a shooting range, um, which as you can imagine is a lot more popular, I think during this pandemic when people have nothing to do. Uh, so this is um, maddening. <laughs> So my, my comment is, I think it is time for, uh, for the shooting range to institute some sound barriers or something to that effect. Uh, I've spoken with a lot of my neighbors um, and honestly, everybody is bothered by it. I know this has come up before. Some of my neighbors have lived here for a very long time. And I hear a lot of excuses about, well, it costs money or they've been here longer than anybody else. Um, and I don't really think that those are valid excuses, to be honest. Uh, you know, a lot of us are spending a lot more time at home and to listen to this all day long is, uh, is really not appropriate. So that is my comment. Okay. Thank you, Colette. For, and, and I'll just ask that, um, Chris, could you just, this would be worthwhile for, for perhaps Chuck to, to take a look at and perhaps uh, see if there is some way to, you know, address the situation, uh, try and, you know, recognizing that you have some competing interests there. You have homeowners in nearby proximity to um, a gun range. There may be some, some compromise that could be reached with just some discussion. So would you mind at least discussing that with Chuck and, and, and maybe contacting Colette and getting some additional information from her? Absolutely. We'll work through that. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I may add, uh, living on Cocoa Avenue, I can even hear them from here. So it's, it's, uh, I, can I can only imagine how, how it is living uh, right next door to this place. Okay. So, and they, they've been going later into the evening too. And I think Colette could uh, verify that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next, Mr. Blayhash. We have no one else at this time, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that'll bring us to the next item on our agenda, which is the consent calendar. And for those that are joining, uh, you recall at our last meeting in September, we discussed uh, this new sort of, uh, the new agenda, the way we set out the agenda, because there are some items that are really just perfunctory business items that we just have to get through. And they don't require full discussion of the board unless a particular member calls it out for such. So we're gonna, we call that the consent calendar. The items under the consent calendar uh, can be voted on with one, with one motion and one second, and then a vote from the board. We don't have to go through each one. So we're gonna do that tonight. And the perfunctory items under the consent calendar are the adoption of the Board of Supervisors meeting minutes from our September 22nd, 2020 board meeting. Uh, that's number A or letter A. Letter B is the financial and performance securities. And under that is B1, one through eight. It's the acceptance of financial security for the stormwater management plan for the Hershey car barn. It's S-2020-012. And then letter C, which is the approval of accounts payable in the amount of $1,684,145.21 and payroll in the amount of $302,648.40. So those being the three items, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve all three items, A, B, and C on the consent calendar. All right, very good. Motion made by Ms. Court to approve items A, B, and C on the consent calendar. Is there a second? I'll second. It's seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving items A, B, and C on the consent calendar, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and these three items on the consent calendar are approved. Thank you, everyone. The next item would be number seven on the agenda. It's old business. It's a1-10 and the, it's the execution of sanitary sewer easement uh, to the Derry Township Municipal Authority for a force main serving 2132 Swadara Creek Road. Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you've noted, this is old business. Uh, Adam Miller had a failing septic system. Um, in replacing it, he had to obtain a highway occupancy, per occupancy permit uh, 
and a permit to cross um, a small creek and a permit from DTMA to connect to the sewer main due to the urgency of the need and with the knowledge that the township was aware of the situation, DTMA oversaw the installation of the two inch diameter low pressure force main and other uh, apprentices, appurtenances. Um, this item is slightly different than last time presented uh, in that uh, previously we were looking at granting an easement to Adam Miller. Since that time, Adam Miller has dedicated this two inch uh, diameter low pressure force main to DTMA from his property line on to the sanitary sewer system. So this um, agenda item this evening is actually granting DTMA an easement for that force main, um, which I think was the preferred method that the board was um, wanting last time. In light of that, I'm recommending that the Board of Supervisors authorizes uh, Chris Chrisman to execute the easement agreement with DTMA with the condition that is recorded by DTMA in the Recorder of Deeds Office. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Emmerich. Uh, any questions for Chuck on this item? If none, is there a motion? Chairman, I'll offer a motion that the Board of Supervisors authorizes Chris Christman to execute the easement agreement with DTMA with the condition that it's recorded by DTMA in the Recorder of Deeds Office of Dauphin County. Thank you, Mrs. Nutt. Motion made by Mrs. Nutt. Is there a second? A second that. Motion seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to execute to authorize Mr. Christman to execute the sanitary sewer easement to the municipal authority for the main serving 2132 Swatara Creek Road. Please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it and this motion passes. That concludes old business. That will take us to new business, number eight on the agenda. The first item under the new business is requesting a authorization for an additional 20 hours to continue engaging special legal counsel for the purpose of providing le special legal services as it relates to the Derry Township Community Center project. Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As the board is aware earlier this year, you authorized the administration to move forward with engaging special legal counsel uh, for the purpose of providing legal services as they relate to the Derry Township Community Center project. Um, at that initial meeting, you did authorize 20 hours and you subsequently authorized an additional 20 hours. I'm now coming back to the board uh, for the third block of 20 hours. Um, and I think rightfully so, you wanted to make sure you kept check on how many hours are being expended uh, on this uh, for the project. Um, certainly if there are any questions, there's no change to the hourly rate. It's still at $387 per hour. Uh, the total anticipated cost for the new 20 hour block is $7,740 if it's completely expended. Um, it's my recommendation that we continue uh, to, to retain the legal services at this point. Um, I think that uh, having McNeese Wallace uh, assist us in this project has been extremely helpful. So if you have any questions, I certainly I'll open the floor to you. Chris, do we have, uh, is there I know I'm asking for a prediction here, but does it, do you think we will be back again asking for another extension of hours based on where we are in the project? I think as of right now, I'm going to say, yes, we will be back at some point in the future to ask for additional hours. Um, you know, the board could open that window a little further to go to 25 hours or 30, you know, I certainly defer to the board's preference here. Um, I fully suspect that uh, we'll utilize that 20 hour block before the end of this year and we'll be back before the board in early January uh, asking for an additional 20 hours at that time. So I, I'll defer I'll defer to the board members on this on this call. Um, certainly up to you. Well, I guess my I just I'm okay with authorizing the additional 20 hour increment. I just was wondering if we, you know, if do we see a proverbial light at the end of the tunnel when we may not need our special counsel? At this point, no. I mean, I think we're going to retain her through most of the construction of the project. You know, we're still working through a couple of legal issues 
uh, right now with uh, with a few of our contractors. So, you know, in light of discussing that further, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. I think it would be um, helpful. I had a similar question, Chris, but I, I think it would be helpful uh, before we get too far into budgeting for 2021 to get a better sense of what the engagement might look like throughout the entire calendar year, uh, just so that either one, we can open up that window a little bit more and also plan for those expenditures, um, and, and two, just have a better understanding of, of what we're looking at. I, no doubt, I'm sure uh, it, it is providing more value and we are saving more money by having that council, but I think it would just be good for planning purposes to know what we're looking at for next year. Absolutely. And we are, to answer that question, we are going to build in time uh, as part of the 2021 budgeting process. You'll see that in the specialized legal services line item in that upcoming budget. So when we take a look at that a little closer, you know, we'll kind of map that out for you and we'll, we'll probably discuss it more at that time. I think it's important for people to remember too that um, this is normal for a project of this magnitude to have special counsel like this. We didn't early on, uh, so it's not that there's anything um, essentially wrong, but it's just more a, a, a good practice as we move forward throughout the process. That's correct. Uh, Mr. Christman, I have a quick question. Uh, I know we're getting a 10% discount, uh, or at last, last I talked to you about that. Is there opportunity for further discount for enhanced hours, uh, lengthening the hours, say from 20 to 30 to 40, maybe? I, I would have to go back and check with the firm and see if there's if there's an you know ability to make that move. I can certainly inquire about that. I wonder if that would be something we could look at, um, and and the possibility of the board approving a uh, a longer. Uh, number of, uh, a larger number of hours to to gather that discount. Let me let me do a little bit more legwork and try to try to work with the firm and see if that's a possibility. You know, certainly that's a great conversation to have now as we're preparing the 21 budget. Um, I think that kind of dovetails nicely with uh, Supervisor Court's comments. So I think I think it's worth taking a look at. Yes. Would it pay us to hold off on this for now and uh, come back next meeting? The next board of supervisors meeting and and uh, discuss it. Well, at this point, yeah. I do have I have an outstanding bill that needs okay. to be paid, so I'm I'm requesting that the board approve this 20 hour block tonight. All righty, no problem. Thank you. All right, thank you. If there's no other questions, is there a motion? I'll go ahead. Actually, just I'll make a motion to authorize an additional 20 hours to engage our special legal counsel uh, for the Derry Township Community Center project. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the additional 20 hours of engagement for our special legal counsel related to the Derry Township Community Center project, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion passes. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of resolution number 2020-29 to provide for the assessment of the cost and expense of the maintenance of street lights within the Township of Derry pursuant to section 2003 or subsection A of the second class Township Code as amended, also providing for the collection thereof. Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> As the board is aware, this is a housekeeping item that you approve annually to address the assessment for streetlights and the collection of fees associated with the maintenance of those streetlights for associated property owners. Um, this resolution tonight would authorize this for calendar year 21, and it is a 2% a increase over the rate where we were last year to account for any new lights that have come into the system and or uh, growth in the rates that are being charged and assessed by PPNL. So this is a, you know, a, a housekeeping matter that will be addressed and it'll be then calculated into the 2021 budget. Thank you, Mr. Chrisman. Questions for Mr. Chrisman on this item? Hearing none, is there a motion? I'll go ahead and make the motion um, that resolution number 2020-29, providing for the assessment of the cost and expense of the maintenance of streetlights within the Township of Derry pursuant to section 2003A of the second class Township Code as amended, 
also providing for the collection thereof is hereby adopted. Thank you. Motion made by Ms. Cord. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving resolution number 2020-29 as described by Ms. Court and seconded by Mrs. Nutt, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it and this motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The next item is letter C. It's the consideration of a proposed in-ground pool and associated pavers and fence at 366 East Chocolate Avenue, Hershey, within the downtown core overlay zoning district. Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this, um, the, the property that's subject to um, this request is shown as 240604 if you can see my cursor um, on the plan. Uh, per the downtown core design standards, the Board of Supervisors has sole approval authority for any new construction of a principal building, principal structure, accessory building or accessory structure located within the downtown core overlay district, which this property is located. The unique part about this property is that normally residential properties are exempted. Uh, the ordinance goes on to say, unless they uh, have frontage on Chocolate Avenue, which is the case here. The applicant, um, Anthony and Silva, uh, Sylvan Pools, on behalf of the owner of 366 East Chocolate Avenue, proposes to install a 15 foot by 30 foot in ground concrete swimming pool. Uh, it will be complemented with 90 lineal feet of bluestone coping. Um, and a 445 square foot champagne gray paver dip. The pool will be surrounded um, by a, a 54 inch high aluminum fence, fence, which is required for swimming pools. It'll be of the Canterbury design. Um, the pool is, consi uh, is considered an accessory structure to the single family dwelling on the property, thus requiring this approval. The downtown, the, core design board at their meeting on September 28, 2020 made a recommendation of appropriateness to the board of supervisors that the uh, proposal was appropriate and consistent with the provisions of the zoning ordinance. I'm recommending that the board of supervisors approve the design of the in-ground pool, coping, pavers, and fence as presented. Questions for Chuck on this item? And if not, we'll consider a motion. I'll make I'll, a motion. I'll make the motion to accept the uh, proposed in-ground pool at 366 East Chocolate Avenue uh, as designed. Right. Very well. Motion made by Mr. Zamuda to approve the proposed in-ground pool and the associated pavers and fence at 366 East Chocolate Avenue. Is there a second? I'll second. The motion is seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the motion as made by Mr. Zamuda and seconded by Mrs. Nutt, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it and said motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Emmerich. Thank you. The next item is D, it's consideration of a second time extension for the conditional approval of the preliminary final subdivision plan for 657 and 653 Sand Hill Road for Michael and Elizabeth Federici, plan number 1325. Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, plot 1325 represents the joining of three individual properties along Sand Hill Road in the Conservation Zoning District. The Board of Supervisors initially approved this plan on February 11th, 2020, conditional upon several items being addressed by the applicant no later than August 11th, 2020. On July 1st, the applicants by way of their engineer requested an extension until October 15th to address the conditions of approval due to the governor's COVID-19 stay at home orders and its subsequent delays on the construction and banking industries. 
the applicants again by way of their engineer are now requesting a second extension of time until March 15th, 2021 to address the conditions of the July 14th, 2020 extended approval. The second extension is being requested due to the financing issues that have resulted because of the COVID-19 regulations for banks. The second extension request proposes no changes to the details of the previously approved plan or to the waivers. I'm recommending that the board extend approval of plat 1325 until March 15th, 2021, subject to the following. Um, that um, by March 15th, 2021, the following items are addressed. The performance security is provided um, and, and, and a performance security uh, agreement is signed or that the improvements are installed. And in this, in this case, the improvements are really property markers. That the meets and bounds are provided on the plan for the 25 foot drainage easement along the northern side of the property. That the comments of the February 3rd HRG letter are addressed and the two originals of the signed and notarized agreement for deferment of curbing and sidewalk installation are provided. And then that the following two things happen um, as the plans recorded, that the agreement for the deferment of curbing and sidewalk installation is recorded concurrently, and that the deed of dedication for right of way along Sand Hill Road is also recorded concurrently with the plan. That concludes my report. Questions for Chuck on this item? If not, we can consider a motion. I'll uh, offer a Go ahead, Mrs. Nutt. <laughs> that the approval of the preliminary and final subdivision plan for 647 653 Sand Hill Road from Michael and Elizabeth Federici, Platt 1325, is extended to March 15th, 2021, subject to compliance with the items A through F as described by Chuck um, in this agenda item. Motion made by Mrs. Nutt. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of approving the motion made by Mrs. Nutt and seconded by Ms. Court, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is E. It's the consideration of filing a discontinuance and, ex and executing the general a general release in Derry Township versus Vasquez Malero at Al. And I will turn to our solicitor, Mr. Nelson. Um. So before you ha you have this uh, settlement agreement, I believe you probably all are more familiar with this than I am. Uh, but generally, you know what happened here is the hold on two seconds. Um, is you know there was an accident that damaged township property, and the. Uh, we had trouble getting a hold of the insurance company. So I believe uh, Mr. Armstrong ended up actually filing a writ, writ uh, in, in court uh, that got the insurance company's attention uh, that has led uh, to this uh, agreement uh, to uh, comp, you know, basically reimburse the township for the costs in repairing the damaged property. Uh, once uh, this is signed uh, and filed, uh, the insurance company will forward the payment onto the township. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. And you're, you're right. Welcome. Yeah, we, I do recall. I think we all probably recall this now. Um, are there any questions for Mr. Nelson on this item? If not, is there a motion? I'll go ahead and make the motion to authorize the filing of a discontinuance and of the execution of a general release in the Derry Township versus Vasquez Malero matter. Is there a second? Second I'll second that. Motion seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the motion, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion is approved. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Mr. Chairman. That concludes our, our 
uh, work under new business. The next item on our agenda is supervisor board and committee reports. Uh, again, so I do like I always do. I'll start with Mr. Zamuda. Any board or committee reports? No, Mr. Chair, I have nothing tonight. All right, thank you, Mr. Zamuda. Ms. Court? I just wanted to remind everyone, and I'm sure Mr. Clark will talk about this as well, but that there is a shredded event coming up Friday from nine to noon uh, that the township is providing for residents and that shredded truck in the parking lot of the Hershey Volunteer Fire Company. And what's interesting, and I want everyone to make sure they understand is that uh, that shredded event is for secure personal documents only. So if you have something with your you know, your social security number on it or a full bank number, credit card number, that's the kind of uh, documents that you can bring to the shredded event. But other paper goods um, like newspapers and cardboard can go in your waste management, recycling tote, curbside, but other papers, glossy things like magazines, uh, flyers, things that you don't wanna throw away, uh, including newspapers and uh, cardboard, you can bring that to the Dairy Township Recycling Center. So I uh, just wanted to make sure everybody understood um, what the shredded event is for and how you can get rid of some of your additional uh, recyclables at home. Thank you very much for raising that. Um, Ms. Ms. Court. Um, There's an article on the township uh, website too on the homepage if anybody wants to check it out later for more information. All right, we will move Thanks. then to Mrs. Nutt. I um, have not had any meetings uh, since our last uh, Board of Supervisor meeting, so I don't have any new report, but adding on to what Susan said, the um, the uh, Ronald McDonald House also takes uh, glossy magazines and recycles them out in those trucks that are out in front. So if you have those and want to recycle those, that's another great place to add them off or drop them off. That's all. Thank you very much, Mr. Wyckoff. Thank you. The DTMA met on 928. Uh, we did, had a review of current construction projects, including a discussion about replacement of a UV system for the final stage treatment uh, to comply with DEP permits. But all else is going well at DTMA. Thanks. Very, very good. And I see we straightened out uh, our, our DTMA easement problem. DTMA, were, they were naughty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, we're all happy to have that behind us. Good, good resolution. So thank you for helping get that accomplished. Yeah. Thank you. And real quick, Tom Clark, I saw the uh, leaf truck. I was out there today, early morning in the rain to be ready. I know there are some people asking on the internet, but the truck is in fact in motion. So everyone be ready. Uh, all right, thank you, Mr. Wyckoff. I, would, I also have had no board or committee meetings since our last meeting. Um, and I, I do not want to steal the thunder of Laura O'Grady for for when she provides her library update. So that's all I'm gonna say. So that concludes supervisor board or committee reports. The next item is our departmental reports and we'll start with our police department and Chief Warner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, the only thing I have for tonight is um, we've completed the uh, transition from our uh, legacy website, the uh, dairypd.com website to our crime watch uh, website or portal. Uh, so uh, there is a redirect. So uh, anytime you would try to get on the uh, dairypd.com website, it will actually redirect you to our crime watch site. Um, it has the uh, full service that we had in our previous website. Uh, there's online forms. You can pay parking tickets, pay for crash reports, uh, do all those types of things. Um, the crime mapping is going to be a feature that we didn't have with our previous website. Uh, and that is, it's rolled out, uh, but they're having some issues with intersection uh, location information. Uh, once they get that uh, up and running, you'll actually be able to see uh, pretty much any uh, report that we do. Uh, will be out there in that crime mapping site. So you'll, you'll see any, uh, any incident that we handle uh, will be out on that uh, crime mapping site. Uh, so you can just go in there, uh, click on those incidents and see what's happening nearby uh, your residence or your business. Um, so uh, there's online reporting. Uh, we instituted that during COVID. Uh, so there are certain incidents that residents can go on that website and uh, report uh, certain types of incidents, obvious, 
obviously the ones that they need an officer out there or an emergency situation, you can't do those type of incidents on the, on the website. But if you have um, maybe something that was damaged on your property and you just need an officer to call you or stop out there at a later time, uh, you can report those type of things on the, uh, the crime watch portal. So uh, we should have a, uh, a press release um, worked up on that uh, hopefully by the end of this week or early next week to uh, kind of go over all the features. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chief. That's a great tool. I can't imagine uh, when I think back, you know, Chief, you go back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the Cape, you know, we had the information available to the public now. It's amazing. And it's great. It's tr it's it cuts down on the amount of time your officers or administrative staff has to has had to you know, spend on generating copies of reports and making them available. So um, kudos to you and the, and the police department for working on this project. It's, uh, it's a great tool for the public. Thank you. Yep. Uh, moving along, Hershey Volunteer Fire Company, Mr. Sassaman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just two quick things tonight, uh, 56 calls for the month of September. And uh, currently every day is a training day for Hershey firefighters, of course, but uh, this week, five, five of our uh, members are down at the Lancaster County training facility uh, doing an advanced rope uh, rescue class. So that's going well for the last two days. And um, we look forward to uh, having them come back and then train the rest of the department in, in some rope uh, techniques. So it's a, that's all I have for this evening. Great. Well, thank you for the update. That's it's. I know we have a, a highly trained fire department, a volunteer fire department, and it's a. And it's just great to see that it continued because it's invaluable. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Public Works, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we of course had a uh, shredded event on October third. But due to the one in the spring being canceled, we had an overwhelming attendance at the October 30 event. So we actually had to turn people away, quite a few people away. So we decided to try and work one in yet this fall. That's going to happen Thursday, um, I'm sorry, Friday morning from nine to noon, adjacent to the firehouse, as member court mentioned before. Uh, we have a banner down there and it's been advertised. Also want to put it out here in the meeting as well. Um, and leaf collection has started, of course, and that's is going to pretty well tie us up until the beginning of December. Other than that, I have nothing. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Any mm -hmm. Anything for Tom? All right, then moving along, we'll go to the library. Ms. O'Grady. Thank you. Um, so my only updates this week are we got some good pieces of information about our construction project. Um, our architect, uh, Chris Dawson architect is um, our project specifically will be recognized with a design excellence award from the American Institute of Architects. And additionally, we will also be featured um, in the upcoming issue of library journal in November because of our renovation project. So once I have um, that, the copies of that magazine, I'll certainly try to get it to everybody so they can see us looking good and uh, we can be proud of ourselves. Um, but uh, so those are, that's my update for this week. So thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, Laura, great news. And please pass along our congratulations to Chris Dawson on a job well that's really well done. Thank you, will do. Next on the uh, list is finance and Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing this evening. All right, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, the next would be then Parks and Recreation, Mr. Mandia. Hey, Chris, uh, Matt has the night off tonight, so got the B team here, apologize. Is that Zach? <laughs> it's me. I don't even, I can't even see a picture, Zach. So that, that is you, right? <laughs> that is me. Good, okay, uh, Zach, Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to provide a, a quick uh, community center update. So in the next several weeks, there will be construction on the walkways leading to the Coco Castle playground. Uh, so we will be uh, creating a temporary entrance in order to keep that open. Uh, so we just ask residents to please follow the signage and the temporary fencing that will be installed. Uh, so we're able to keep that playground open as long as possible while that work is being completed. Um, some notable work that's been accomplished over the past several weeks 
the backfill of the building pad has been completed and all of the excess soil has been removed from the site. Uh, there has also been quite a bit of work done on the outdoor pool. They have poured the exterior slab in the surge tank. Uh, the rebar for the walls is around 80% complete and the electrical contractor has begun the grounding and bonding. Uh, so over the next several weeks, the rigid inclusion subcontractor will begin their work on the building's foundation systems and construction will continue on the outdoor pool, uh, which will include finishing the rebar and the installation of the pool walls. So that's what we've got to look forward to in, in the next several weeks. And that's all I have for this evening. Great, thank you, Zach. Thank you. Great. All right, next on the list is Township Engineer, Mr. Banano. Thank you. Uh, just another update for the DTMA. I was out with Mike Callahan uh, this morning and we continue to look at sites around the township uh, to, to fix problems for the stormwater um, implementation fee that's being collected. So um, we were out twice in two weeks here and continue and have about eight different projects that we're looking at with, with DTMA. Uh, in addition with that, uh, having to report that DTMA submitted their a DEP MS4 annual report uh, on time uh, to be in compliance with their MS4 permit. Good. Thank you. Good report. Thank you, Matt. Next on the list is community development, Mr. Emmerich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to make the board aware that it's necessary for us to update chapter 85, which is our UCC um, statewide building code uh, ordinance. We need to uh, update some references and insertions under the Pennsylvania Construction Code. I'm looking at listing that ordinance for action at your November 9th meeting. So I'm looking uh, to advertise that for that meeting. Okay. That's all I have. Yeah. All right, thank you, Chuck. Next on the list, Township Manager, Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing additional for the board this evening. All right, very good. Well, that concludes departmental reports. Uh, that'll take us to the next item on the agenda, which is our visitor or public comment session. It's our second such session of the evening. Same rules apply as to the first. Uh, you must state your name and address before you place your comment into the record. Uh, you'll be given, we ask people to try to stick to about three minutes or less, so please be brief and get to the point. Um, if you don't follow the rules, you'll be put back at the end of the queue and you'll have to wait again until you come back up again for a second time. But uh, so far, people have been fantastic, so we haven't, have, haven't even had that issue. I just feel compelled to keep repeating it in case we have somebody new on the call. So with that, Mr. Blayhush, do we have anyone wishing to speak? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have Rich Campbell. Very good. Rich Gamble, 39 Hawkersville Road, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, Mr. Gamble. Okay, um, I read in the newspaper that the uh, apparently the contract with Powertrain is not going to uh, come to uh, be successful. What financial impact will that have on Derry Township? If somebody could uh, talk about that, I'd appreciate it. We're not a gym. Uh, well, I don't know, Mr. As again, Mr. Gamble, it's not really question and answer, but Mr. Chrisman, if you have insight into that on that question. Is there going to be economic, is there any impact of powertrain, any e economic impact, I suspect, to the township based on powertrain closing? I think that's what Mr. Gamble's question was. At this point, you know, our arrangement with powertrain was any fees that we would collect through rental, uh, lease rental income was used to offset the debt service that the township uh, was adjoined to with the school district for their property. Uh, that debt service does expire, I believe, in 22 or 23. Uh, so we will have the remainder of that debt service to pay for now. Obviously, uh, that losing that rental income will mean that the debt service fund will have to accommodate uh, that small debt service payment 
for that facility. But, you know, if we can try to uh, close that gap sooner than 22 or 23, then the township will be out completely of the we're not a gym business. All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Chrisman. Uh, Mr. Blayhush, is there another speaker? No, Mr. Chairman, there's no one else at this time with their hand raised. All right. Well, that brings us to the last item on our agenda. That concludes all of our business. So the last item on the agenda is adjournment. So we'll need a motion and a second. So moved. Moved by Ms. Court. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjournment, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it and our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>